Well, Ravi Singh is the founder of the humanitarian aid charity, Kalsa Aid. Thank you for joining us here on BBC News. Um, I understand that obviously you've been involved in getting aid, the required aid to those in need in India, and uh, there is some aid on its way as we speak. Yes, uh, good evening. Um, today, as we speak, uh, there's a Virgin Atlantic flight about to take off from Heathrow Airport. They kindly offered to uh, transport 200 oxygen concentrators, which were donated uh, very generously by the public uh, to India. We only made the appeal on Monday, and within a few days, we had about 300 and something uh, oxygen concentrators, and 200 are being taken. As we speak now, the plane will be taking off uh, to India, landing tomorrow morning. So we are we're really, uh, truly uh, blessed by the community in the UK who so uh, kindly donated these so quick. Yeah, um, I mean, we can see reaction to this on Twitter. There's um, been a tweet sent reading, Proud of Virgin Atlantic, sending oxygen supplies to India, and pilots Jazz Singh and Chris Hall, who've been working hard to secure oxygen concentrators and to make uh, this happen. Uh, Ravi, the oxygen machines, for example, this is highly specialised equipment. Where are you getting it from? Well, that's the great, that's the great thing. Uh, when we made the appeal on Monday, it was off the cuffs. Look, we were desperate. We saw the cries for help in India. I'm getting messages day and night. And I thought, we'll, uh, before we look for buying in China or elsewhere when supplies are short, why not make an appeal in our own country? I expected about 50, maybe 100, because they range from 200 pounds to 1,000 pounds. And within the first, uh, I think, two days, we had uh, over 100 delivered. And the last four or five days, we had, uh, I think, about 300 and maybe 20 now delivered. So uh, it's the public. It's the general public. We just asked for machines. Nobody's even heard of these machines. I haven't mm -hmm. heard of them. But they went out. They went online, clicked the machine, got it delivered to our head office in Slough. And uh, we packed it all within a few days, and now they're on a the plane. Uh, it's amazing generosity of the British public. Um, Ravi, obviously, the, the hope is that the, the aid, the, the, the oxygen machines, for example, go to those most in need. How, how exactly is that being decided? Because a lot of the stories we're hearing are concentrated in those large, um, large cities, for example. What about, what about the villages? Because in the initial pandemic, or the first stage of the pandemic, a lot of people returned to their villages to escape what was going on in towns. Yes, uh, so these 200, they'll be split. Half of them will go to Delhi, which is still fighting a huge battle against uh, the virus. And the other 100 will go to rural areas and cities uh, in the neighboring state of Punjab, which uh, is uh, where we're from and is being hit quite hard now. A lot of the people from Delhi are going into those states for treatment. So, and on top of that, we're also working with uh, our community and uh, teams, Kalsai teams, in, uh, in Maharashtra, Bombay, and other areas. And that's where it's been really hit in the rural areas. So we are also trying to work with uh, many NGOs, hospitals, charitable hospitals and clinics in the state of uh, Punjab as well, to say, are you ready? Are you prepared? What do you need from us? These, these talks have been going on since last couple of days, and they're all asking for oxygen, solutions for oxygen, and a few other things like ventilators, so uh, we're very fortunate that some of the ventilators will be coming from abroad. These concentrators will be going to some of these rural areas. And we are also working with the local state government to say, look, how can we help you to help the people? Because at the end of the day, the virus is vicious. We need to work together. So yes, you're right. Rural areas have no health infrastructure or, there, or there's a huge mm. lack. And where there is health uh, infrastructure is being overwhelmed. We're receiving reports all the time. I had reports coming in just before I come on the, the, the interview now, messages coming on my uh, phone uh, asking for oxygen for 200 people, asking for oxygen for their fathers, for their mums. And it's a, it's a very desperate situation. I'm sure these machines are going to save lives. Uh, Ravi, obviously you're, you're trying to help out uh, India, but as we know, this virus does not uh, respect borders. Have you had any contact from neighbouring countries? Is there a spillover that we're not aware of yet? Well, we uh, since COVID started last year, we from Carlside UK here, we've been supporting uh, our community, communities as well, 
the vulnerable in the UK as well as the NHS, as well as day laborers in, in Kenya, in Peru, we're supporting international students uh, with food parcels in Russia, Ukraine, Cyprus, Australia. And uh, on top of that, we've been supporting the refugees from, from the beginning of last year in uh, northern Iraq, uh, who faced uh, difficulties already. And then on top of the virus came, and now the lockdowns are like a double lockdown for the refugees. So this, the virus is international. Our response is international. So we are not just uh, based on India. India is something we focused on last year uh, in small pockets, but now a major concentration. But as a charity NGO, we've been working around the globe and this pandemic hey, is unpredictable. So it's not like we can plan one country and walk away. We're still prepared, uh, even in East Africa, a lot of the day laborers are facing uh, hunger crisis again because they can't get, you know, can't go to the work, etc. So we, we, we're getting requests for help uh, for large food deliveries, food packs. So our work continues. It's not just focused on India. India is just now being hit. It's just huge hit. Nobody expected it. So we're now focused on that, just trying to get the oxygen supplies, infrastructure, supporting the existing infrastructure. We say, look, preparing the area has not been hit. And in the area that has been hit, these oxygen machines, these concentrators are well recorded. We, we make sure every person who needs it, we visit their homes, we, we track everything, and then someone also follows the progress. So they're not just thrown at someone. There's always there's a whole program behind uh, handing a, each machine. There's a criteria, and then it moves on very quickly. And sometimes uh, the machine's given. We got a call back within a few hours. Please take your machine, give it someone else. My relative has passed away. Wow. Uh, so there's a tragic story is happening. It's, it's unfolding all the time. It's very, very fluid and unpredictable. And, and our response remains very fluid too. Okay. Ravi Singh, thank you.